Okay, in the need to know before you go section here, uh, I'm going to talk about your riding gear. Um, so you got to know, you need to know before you go is that you're going to be riding in very hot conditions if you're going to be going doing Central and South America. Not only that, you're going to be riding in very cold conditions as soon as you start going up into the mountains. Not only that, you're going to be riding in very wet conditions as soon as you get to places like Panama and Nicaragua and Costa Rica and places like that, where it does rain a hell of a lot. So having the right gear is just so important and thinking about what you're going to buy before you go is important too. You know, I met a couple of guys that had like wet weather gear, dry weather gear, you know, if you can afford it, buy the gear that gets you everything in one, you know. Um, the only thing you might want to get is some protective for boots, because if you really do get in the slosh, you're going to need some, uh, you don't want to get uh, water up in your socks. The good news is, look at this fucking idiot. It's sitting right on my ass. There's three lanes you can choose from. Um, so yeah, you just got to, um, I'm riding, this is Medellin by the way, just in case I didn't mention it, um, it's a pretty shitty part of Medellin, I'm actually driving into the, into the city square now, going to have a look around at that, but yeah, so having the, ha, I, what my suggestion is buy, spend as much money on the, on your, on, on your riding gear as possible for protection, um, I've gone with the Klim Overlander, gear, I don't know if they're continuing, they're, I know it's still available on places like Revzilla, um, uh, and then you've got the Klim, Klim Badlands as well, Klim Climb, I don't give a shit, not my problem, um, and uh, I, I've got both, I've got the Overlander and Overlander and the uh, Badlands, um, and I chose the Overlander only because it's a little bit lighter and a little bit more breathy, you know, now, I'm a big sweater, so you know, it makes a difference, but you're going to get wet, 100% guaranteed, you're going to get cold, 100% guaranteed, not, I'm not going to say freezing like arctic conditions, but cold enough where you want to put something else on, so I've got some under, un, underwear, some long underwear and for the, for the, my jacket, and also for my, um, pants, I'm just going to sit behind you, I don't want to bother, um, and, uh, and then I've got a, about three pairs of socks, uh, riding socks. You want ones that are going to wick it nicely, you know. Uh, keep the sweat away. Uh, it's not, it doesn't make much difference to me. I'm going to have to get around because it's going so slow. Um, and then for the boots, I've gone with the Daytona Roadstar only because, I, you know, I get off the bike a lot and go for walks and stuff like that. And more of the heavy-duty off-road boots are just so uncomfortable to wear around. Well, these, even though they killed me the first two weeks and I thought, oh, I'm not going to be able to... Now they're the most comfortable boots I've ever had. I love them. Um, so, yeah. So that's the burnt pants, jacket and boots. Um, if you're going to get uh, non-waterproof, non well, then you're going to have to get a jacket over the top because you're going to be miserable. And the reason why I get waterproof gear, number one, and really good gear, is that nothing dries here as well because it's so humid, you put a jacket, you wash your jacket and pants put on the balcony like I've just done with my jacket, that's why I'm not wearing it. Um, it takes two to three days to dry and you want to get a bit of breeze. And the only way you get breeze is if you're on a, at a hotel or something, you're about 10, 15 floors up most of the time. So recommended, get, get the gear that's already waterproof. The boots. I'll leave, let you decide, but these Daytona Roadstars, even though they're about $450, they're friggin' superb boots. The gloves, again, I'll let you decide, whatever's more comfortable. I've got two pairs, I've got a waterproof pair and these. These, I predominantly wear them, and it's not the most thing. Because I am, if I come off, these aren't going to provide me any real protection. Uh, but when I do the off-roading, or any uh, rough-roading, um, I'll, I'll take the, gear, the gloves out of my backpack. The last thing is the, your helmet, well it's not the last thing, one of the last things is the helmet and uh, I've got a Schubert D1 Hunter, um, again it's expensive gear but 
this is what happened this is what's protecting me if I come off and if once you ride around here you realize that at some stage you are going to come off yeah whether it's serious or not is another thing but you are it's just crazy it's good great fun but it is crazy and like I came off with a pothole about a foot and a half deep in a shaded corner um, a foot and a half deep by about a metre long and bang just went bang bang both punches uh, two tyres punctured uh, they were rim punctures so the that you know I've got uh, I've got tubeless so I was able to fix the rear and front rim the rear rim needed to be replaced eventually I got it replaced in Cartagena I uh, got a new one sent a few weeks in advance but yeah you're probably going to come off if you don't come off I mean there's plenty of guys that are not going to come off but uh, I consider that a little bit lucky or you're a pretty conservative rider which is a good thing finally um, so we got the, the helmet whatever's comfortable you, I, I like the shoe I love because it's I've got a long ugly head and um, it, 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 it fits me really snug um, and the, the, but this is not the best helmet Shubert, Shubert makes, I don't think. Um, the, the visor flies up and down all the time. Uh, I've actually got hacked it a little bit so it doesn't, I've made it, I've put some pressure pads at the top when I flip it up so it doesn't come down. So hopefully it doesn't come down during this ride because it's the second day I've had it on. Um, but, and it is extremely hot. There's not much air gets into any Shubert helmet and this one's no exception. Um, which is not a big deal when you're travelling, but when you stop in the cities, oh boy, does it just pour out of me. And it can cause problems with your comms, you know, uh, with your, if you've got comms, like I've got the Drift Ghost S and, um, and the Drift Lapel. Um, and I've also got the, uh, I've also got the uh, Uclear Digital, which I probably wouldn't recommend. I'll, next time I'll probably get a Cena there. Their device is fine, but their apps are freaking terrible. Um, and so in my backpack, um, you're going to realise that when you travel, you're going to get stopped. I mean, I've been stopped probably now 10, 15 times here in Colombia, which is more, more than triple any other country. And a lot of the time, they just want to stop you to have a look at your bike, which is, which is nice. But it, after a couple of goes, it gets annoying because sometimes they want to call their friends in and then all of a sudden you're sitting there for half an hour while they they serve some sort of appetite of theirs. Um, so in your backpack you want to have your license, uh, your passport, uh, and in a waterproof bag. Um, your, your your passport, your import documents, any of the any of the documents for each country are ready and handy because they'll ask for it. Whether or not you need it or not is another thing, but they will ask for it. Just going to switch lanes here. Um, so, and I've got a towel in my backpack, I've got a pair of flip-flops and uh, so I'm ready to jump in the water at a moment's notice and now my, my uh, hat just came off. Um, yeah, so um, I've got uh, chewing gum, I've got uh, my medical kit um, and I've got a Klim back, but the Klim, I can't remember what it's called. Um, backpack, the climb backpack. It's friggin' one of my favourite pieces of gear ever. It's so cool, and it's you know it's comfortable to wear. Even though sometimes I have a bit of weight in it because it's got a water bag in it, like a three-liter water bag. Um, and uh, but I actually love it. And I, I hear they've discontinued it, which is just crazy, because um, it's one of the best pieces of kit I brought with me, easily. Um, so yeah, uh, so I'm gonna I'm jumping around a little bit here, and um, so yeah, the the backpack. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else I've got in there. I've got I've got some extra cash in there and stuff like that. Not much, but it's um, it's pretty important that you that that you like. Like when you go through Mexico and some of these countries, you'll get stopped at military checkpoints. You don't want to have to get off the bike and, and get a whole heap of gear in, in there if you've got to do that, you know. So I'm just daydreaming here. Um, you just want to be able to get on your way, you know.
Um, I feel like a bit of a dick talking while all this is going on, but so I'm coming into this is uh, central central area. I mean. Motorbikes here, uh, everyone's got a motorbike. They're, most of the cheap ones like the Pulsars and stuff like that, but everyone has got one. I'm sorry if I'm being a bit solid, but I just don't want to look like a dickhead. Um, so yeah, the, the um, all, I, all I suggest is uh, is that you get the gear that you feel most comfortable in, and and you and you also, and you get the gear you can afford, you know. You don't want to be blowing budgets on it, but you like when you get to countries. When you get to countries like um, Mexico and and some of the other countries, there's military checkpoints everywhere, and you just don't want to have to be getting off your bike all the time. You know, you just want to be able to relax, and they're all pretty cool. But you just got to make sure you, you you've got everything that you need, and then you've got your tank bag, and you know, in my tank bag, I've got a cloth, you know, some wipes and more chewing gum, and I've got a couple of cameras in there. Um, I've got uh, I've got my bike lock, um, my my uh, uh, disc lock, um, and a, a bunch of other little bits and pieces. Uh, just so, you know, um, just basically all the little things that you might need if you want to stop and not have to get off the bike. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the gear stuff, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, if you've got any comments, just comment away, and I'll respond as soon as I can.